for the caramel using the dry method, all we will need will be a heavy bottom pan, your sugar, whatever amount you want to use. I myself will be using about half a cup of sugar. You will need a small container with water. Warm or hot water is best. If you use cold water, it actually encourages crystallization. But right here, I will go ahead and put my sugar in the pot. I don't want to toss it very roughly. Otherwise, it goes on the edges and this also can um, cause crystallization down the road. The water that I have, and I keep a brush as well so that we can brush the sugar crystals down if needed. You want your heat to be medium to high heat and you just let it sit there until you see the edges start to melt. When you start seeing this, it's better not to use a spatula or a spoon. I, at least for myself, I prefer not to. Otherwise, uh, it can also cool down your sugar as you take it out and then incorporate it again. So it's best to just swirl it around, start using small circles, and then the more that it melts, of course, you swirl a little bit more vigorously. Once it starts getting this nice golden caramelly color, uh, this is a time when you can check your edges and if there is some sugars that are stuck to the side and that have started to crystallize this is a time when we take that brush that was in the water and you can just paint over those uh, sugar crystals and they just melt right back in once you do this it's very important that you again swirl that pot around so that you uh, incorporate them but if you use cold water it actually cools the sugar your caramel that is already in there and it will cause those sugars, that sugar that is cooling to crystallize actually, which it just uh, spreads throughout the whole mixture and it's not what we are looking for. And so we'll continue to swirl around until we get a deeper caramel color. Uh, amber color is what we are going for. Depending on your desired color that you're seeking or whatever you are using this caramel with, that color can change, but a, you have to be very careful not to let it burn. So here towards the end, you see how I am making sure to swirl more often to prevent burning. If you have an open flame, you can just pick up your pot and move it over if you see that it starts to cook too quickly. So next to me, I also had a half sheet pan lined with parchment paper. You can use a silk hat. And then you can just bring it over whenever you have your caramel to the desired temperature you can just pour it and once we have done this we can just set it in a cooling rack and once it is solidified we can come back to it okay, so here we have our cool caramel i'll go ahead and remove the half sheet pan and then we can start cracking it depending on uh, what sizes you desire so these are Pieces that you can use for garnish many times if you want to use it as a crunch factor within a dessert such as a mousse. Depending on what you want to use, of course the sizes will vary. This uh, piece, for example, can be used as a garnish on top of a plated dessert. Uh, sizes you can just break according to that. Uh, sometimes the caramel will be very sticky. It will be very tacky if it's very humid in the environment that you are in so it's good to keep it in a cold and dry environment and this one i'm just going to put in a deli after i break it up into pieces and there you have it this is your caramel using the dry method